today. We've got Charles C.W. Cook of National Review. Laura Logan will be here of Fox Nation and later Alan Dershowitz, Professor Emeritus of Harvard Law, who had this very funny, weird dust up with Larry David. He's going to come on to talk about the abortion stuff happening down in Texas, but you got to hear the Larry David story. Okay, we're going to start, though, with Charles Cook. Charles, what a pleasure. Very excited to have you as our very first guest as we're live on Sirius. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. Okay, so let's dig in with COVID. Uh, You had a really interesting piece on National Review that basically said, here's the bitter truth. There's no rhyme or reason uh, to this virus and that the pandemic doesn't hinge on whether the state has a Democrat or a Republican in the governor's mansion. Um, The New York Times had an article suggesting the same and some in the media lost their minds. Uh, You pointed out in your piece, MSNBC's Kyle Griffin attacked the Times. This isn't true. Do better because the Times had said, you know, exactly why Florida has been hit so hard remains an elusive question. Soledad O'Brien called it journalistic malpractice. They really want to blame DeSantis and his aversion to mask mandates. And the truth is, the, the science doesn't bear that up. They, they really can't do that. No, I, I think there are two things going on here. One is obvious. There is a partisan imperative here to fold this into our politics. Uh, there's also a desire to poison certain people ahead of 2024, Ron DeSantis being one of them. But I think the broader problem and the reason that this works to an extent is people just don't like it when they're told that there's not a great deal they can do. Human beings don't enjoy that. They much prefer a conspiracy theory because a conspiracy theory gives you an easy answer. It gives you an easy explanation, but it also gives you an easy answer. If you can find the evil man up in the tower, put him in prison, then it'll stop. COVID doesn't really work like that. I mean, there are some things we know. The vaccines work pretty well. They're not foolproof. Um, They haven't prevented everyone from getting COVID, but you are very unlikely to die if you get vaccinated, which is why you should get vaccinated. I have a lot of friends around here in Florida who work in the medical profession, and that's the one thing that they will say is the pattern. If you're vaccinated, you're probably not going to die if you get it. Other than that, it's tough. Mm -hmm. There are some states that have a lockdown. There are some states that have mask mandates. There are some states that have um, school masking policies. Doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. Israel has tried everything. I mean, Israel had pretty draconian lockdowns uh, enforced by drones, no less. They vaccinated everyone before any other country. They're doing booster shots now. They have uh, countrywide mask mandates in schools. They still have mask mandates inside, and they're getting absolutely slammed. And it's not because they did anything wrong. It's not because they're bad people. It's not because the witch doctors dislike them. It's because this is a horrible and unpredictable disease, and feedback loops are really hard to predict. And the point I wanted to make is, look, with the exception of Andrew Cuomo, who obviously made an active mistake and then tried to cover it up. There's really not much good pointing at Phil Murphy of New Jersey or Ron DeSantis of Florida uh, or Governor Newsom in California or Greg Abbott in Texas and, and saying, aha, it's because of them. It's them personally. It's their ideology. It's the people who vote for them. It's not. It's not how it works. And we need to cut it out. Mm-hmm. But to your point, people do want to do something. And if you don't want to make people do something, you get villainized, right? That's what's happening to DeSantis. And it's happening to regular old American citizens who oppose vaccine mandates or mask mandates. You know, to your point, it's like I have no objection if somebody wants to send their child to class with a mask on or do anything with a mask on. That's that's their business. But we've gotten to this point now where if you don't want the government to mandate that your eight-year-old have a piece of cloth over his face eight or nine hours a day, even though there's no proof that children are particularly good vectors of this virus, uh, and they remain, even though Delta has been problematic, they remain at very, very low risk uh, to the outcomes of COVID, you're, you're somehow part of the problem. And, and we, we refuse. We refuse to look at the data in Israel. We refuse to look at the limited data that's come out showing that, that masks have any effect one way or another in the school setting, right? Like people just 
they feel like something must be done. And if you're against the mandating of doing it, you're on the wrong side. Well, and I think the idea is that if you're on uh, the the anti-mandate side, then you don't care enough. And I think this is what this is ultimately about. It's a superstition. You know, I can't count the number of times I've now heard that Governor DeSantis doesn't tweet enough about vaccines. <laughs> uh, there's this new conventional wisdom that the reason that there are still people, as there are in every state, in fact, Florida's numbers are quite good, who are unvaccinated is because DeSantis hasn't been emphatic enough. And it's just not true. I mean, in the early days, he was emphatic. Indeed, he uh, ran around the state for months, started with the elderly, and, and every publicity stunt he could imagine, uh, he used. Um, World War II veterans, Holocaust survivors, we, we saw them vaccinated first on television um, to send the message, look, uh, this is available. And it's worthwhile. Um, you know, there are now uh, much uh, higher hanging pieces of fruit. <laughs> and we're not talking about people lining up around the block, as I did, to get the vaccine. We're talking about the people who don't want it, either because they're indifferent towards politics, they don't follow politics, um, or because they're actively, ideologically opposed to getting a vaccine. 